Welcome to the evening services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, November the 22nd. Uh, we will be singing several songs and having a couple of prayers, and I will be delivering a lesson to you from a series of lessons I began about five weeks ago, dealing with the seven desires of every heart. And so we're going to begin with our song service, singing from Songs of Faith and Praise, and so if you have one of those books, please turn to page 797. <clears throat> 797. Okay, is everybody ready? Lord, we come before Thee now, at Thy feet we humbly bow. Oh, do not our suit disdain, shall we seek Thee, Lord, in vain? Shall we seek Thee, Lord, in vain? Lord, on Thee our souls depend, in compassion now descend. Fill our hearts with Thy rich grace, do our lips to sing thy praise. Do our lips to sing thy praise. Grant that all may seek and bind the God supremely kind. Heal the sick, the captive free. Let us all rejoice in Thee. Let us all rejoice in Thee. Turn please to number 172. One seventy two. <clears throat> I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise his holy name. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to love the Lord. I just came to love the Lord. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to love the Lord. And before our first prayer, let's sing number 700. And 77. The first, the second, and the fourth verses. <clears throat> One, two, and four. Father, hear the prayer we offer. Nor for these that pray. 
shall be but for strength that we may quiet stay but would smite the living fountains from the rocks along our way let our path be bright or dreary so Sunshine be our share. May our souls in all bond weary make thy work our ceaseless prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that. Uh, we can sing praises to your name, and we're so grateful that we have a God that's worthy of those praises. Uh, I just pray, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, in these uh, trying times that uh, you would keep us safe as we approach the Thanksgiving season. Uh, I know it's a time where uh, families like to get together in large gatherings, but Help us to use common sense, dear Heavenly Father, within our families. Uh, help us uh, as the uh, COVID has started to spike in this area and around our nation, uh, just to use the sense that you've uh, given to us to uh, stay as safe as we can. Uh, help us, dear Heavenly Father, to be thankful in this season where we think about thankfulness. Uh, I pray that uh, you would be with those that uh, are on our prayer list. Uh, Natalie requests prayers for the family of uh, Dory Doyne, who passed away this past week, and uh, we would just uh, we would just like to remember that family and uh, uh, be with Natalie as she is close to that family. I pray that you would be with our friend Pat, dear Heavenly Father, as she undergoes. Uh, several different issues in her life and help us to be uh, the kind comforters that we need to be. And I ask that you would be with uh, our neighbor, Juan uh, Carrasco, as he's dealing with the sickness of his father. Uh, his father is 81 years old and is in stage four lung cancer. And uh, currently he's uh, going up to Temple University and uh, to seek treatment, and I pray that you would be with him and, and be with that family. We know, dear Heavenly Father, as we're going to find out in our lesson tonight, the importance of prayer in our life, and help us, dear Heavenly Father, to approach your throne uh, in thanksgiving at this time of year, but also in asking you to be with those that uh, we care about and those that are friends of people that we care about. Be with us through the rest of this service. I pray it in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And the last song that we're going to sing is number 296. We kind of like this song. We sing it fairly often. 296. <clears throat> We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Christ the Lord. Let's 
forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Oh, great job. I hope you enjoyed the song service as much as uh, we enjoyed singing. And so, without uh, further ado, let's get to our lesson that I think is a rather important one and should be a little bit intriguing to us and a little challenging to us. Uh, if you remember correctly, oh, somewhere in the neighborhood of five or six weeks ago, I started a, a series of lessons based on Mark and Deborah Laser's book, Seven Desires of the Heart. In that book, they chronicled seven basic desires or basic needs that people have. This week, we are going to focus in on one of those needs. The need that we are going to focus in on this week is uh, the basic need that people have to be well thought of. Okay, did you get that? It's very simple, and it's very straightforward. That basic need that we have to be well thought of. Now, I'm going to use two people in our New Testament as examples of people who were well thought of. And that the Bible specifically talked about these people as being well thought of. And um, as we do, I, I think we may find them intriguing, especially the first one. In Acts chapter 10, verse 22, it says, A centurion, a righteous and God-fearing man, well spoken of by the entire nation of the Jews. Well spoken of. In other words, he was well thought of by the Jews. Isn't that a remarkable statement? Because Cornelius, if we know our Bibles very well, was the first Gentile convert in the New Testament. And so we're talking about someone who was well thought of, who was not Jewish. And yet the Jewish people were the ones who thought highly of him. Huh. The second one is just as remarkable. In Acts chapter 16 and verse 2, in talking about Timothy, it says that he was well spoken of by the brethren who were in Lystra and Iconium. Lystra and Iconium. Now, there's a good chance that Timothy was fairly young. He may have even been a teenager at this time. And that's a lot to say for someone to people think to think highly of him as that young of a person. But there's even something a little bit more remarkable. What is remarkable is that he had a good reputation, get this, in two different towns. Lystra and Iconium. If you have a Bible that has a Bible map uh, at the time of Jesus or at the time of the Apostle Paul, you will see that Lystra and Iconium are 20 miles apart. Back in those days, that was a day's journey. Timothy was well thought of in two towns, 20 miles, a day's journey apart from one another. And so, let's first explore how does one become well thought of? How does one become 
well thought of. Now, Cornelius must have done something, said something, or represented something as a centurion, as a Roman, thus as a Gentile, for the Jews to think highly of him. We find out in Acts chapter 10, verse 21, Acts 10, 21, this is previous to the last verse. It says that he was a devout man, one who feared God with all of his household, and gave many alms to the Jewish people and prayed to God continually. Uh, in baseball, sometimes uh, you, you get two games for the price of one. We call it a double header. Guess what? This is a triple header. There are, are three reasons here, three rationales for why Cornelius was highly thought of. First, he was devoted to God and he feared God. He was devoted to God, and this is very surprising in that he was a Gentile. He, it probably indicates that he um, was a, what we would call a proselyte who was at the, at the gates of the temple. Uh, uh, Gentiles could only go so far into the temple. And he had not fulfilled all of the physical rituals, including being circumcised, to become uh, a Jew. And so he was a proselyte at the gate, but he followed Jewish law. It says that he was a devout man. He took out these Jewish scriptures and he studied them. He followed the Jewish law. His devotion to God went a step further. He was only not he was not only devout in his whole household with him and feared the Lord, but it says that uh, he gave many alms to the Jewish people. So he gave of uh, he tithed, if you would, to the Jewish people, a way that shows his devotion to them. I would assume that this was a tithe, and so what I would assume, it was in the form of money. So there's two. He was devout and feared the Lord, and he gave of his money. And thirdly, it says that he prayed to God continually. All right? He prayed to God continually. He was a prayerful person. So I would submit to you today, if we want to be well thought of, we should be devout and we should fear the Lord. We should give back to the Lord and we should be prayerful people. If we want to gain respect from those around us. And so when a person, let's bring, let's fast forward this to the church, when one is in the family of God, vis-a-vis -vis the church, he is surrounded by people who appreciate holiness and righteousness in other people. And so, if one wants to be well thought of, because, and this is a kind of a double-edged sword, then a person needs to be in the family of God, where people are like-minded. That all of these people appreciate the characteristics of a good Christian person. And more important than that is that God appreciates those that
that have such a character that can be well thought of. Now, how do I know this? Am I just grasping this and saying, well, I think this is what God thinks. Let's look at what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 21. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. This is God saying, I've appreciated the type of person that you are. And because of that, you can be in this kingdom. You can be a part of this kingdom. I think it has implications to the next kingdom, to the kingdom of eternal life. All right. So are we ready to pat ourselves on the back and say, what a good boy am I? You know, little Jack Corner sat in the corner. Um, there's a warning that comes with this. And so let's make sure that we look at the warning. And let's make sure that we want to be well thought of for the right reasons. Now, how do I know this? Well, it's not Symes' words. They are Jesus' words. The scripture, if you want to look it up, is Luke chapter 6 and verse 26. Luke chapter 6, verse 26. Very boldly, very clearly, very plainly, Jesus said, Woe to you, when all men speak well of you. Oops. <laughs> Woe to you when all men speak well of you. So where's, how does this warning sneak in, I guess, to all of this? And because of the words of Jesus, they're not sneaking in. They're up front and bold and personal. All right, here it is. It's a bad sign if both good people and bad people speak well of us. I'm letting that soak in a little bit. It's a bad thing. It's a, it's a bad sign if both good people and bad people speak well of us. Because what that implies is that good people think that we're part of them and the bad people think that we're part of them. Something's the matter with this picture. If the wicked think that we're one of them and the righteous think that we're one of them, something is very, very basically wrong. Now, sometimes who a person really is can be best determined by who does not speak well of that person. You know what Jesus said? Light and dark can't exist in the same place. Right? They can't exist in the same place. And you know what? Here's something else that uh, you may give some thought to. Now, this is, this is reflected by a psychologist. His name is uh, Frederick Newman. And, and I'm going to read this because I have not committed it to memory. And see what you think of it. Here's what it says. Those who grow up with low self-esteem because they were belittled in childhood often continue to hold that opinion stubbornly in the face, sometimes even of exceptional success. Hmm. What we learn during these formative years 
has an outside outsized effect on the rest of our lives. Ideally, those who grew up thinking well of themselves, because that is what their parents thought, will become resistant to the bad opinion of others. Sometimes, someone who is supremely self-confident can shrug off unreasonable criticism. They can even tolerate being ostracized. Now, of course, that is an idealized state. And so do you, th you see what this, this doctor was, was getting at? We have to have a high opinion of ourselves before other people will have a good opinion of us. This isn't being, this isn't being overtly boastful. This is what we really think of ourselves. If you ask me, do you think I'm going to heaven? I'm not going to you know, mope around and say, oh, golly, I'm not sure. No, I'm doing everything I can in my life to have eternal life with the Lord. And I'm going to say, yes, this is my goal. As the Apostle Paul said, I strive constantly for that goal. And I don't feel like I have achieved it, but I continue to strive for it. This is what we're supposed to be about. I should have a high opinion of my striving, of trying to get to the Lord. So, as I conclude this lesson this evening, since one of our basic needs is to be well thought of. We need to make sure that we are well thought of for the right reasons. Now, here's where the rubber actually meets the road. In reality, there are only two beings out there that need to give approval that those to those who wish to be well thought of. First and foremost, we must strive to be well thought of by God. We need to live lives of love and service so that God looks at us and says, you're on the right path. You're striving to get back to me. And because of that, I think highly of the way you're walking. Secondly, we must satisfy our own conscience. I am the only entity that is going to go to heaven as far as I'm concerned. And I'm the only one that I can get into heaven. Oh, I can teach others and I can show others the way, but I can only get me into heaven. And the only way to do that is to follow Jesus' teachings, to follow the apostolic teachings, and so to satisfy our own conscience. So if we satisfy those two beings we will not be either bothered or maybe even flattered by what someone else says or by what someone else thinks. Because Jesus said it, didn't he? Jesus says, woe to you when all men speak well of you. Let's make it our goal. Let's make it our goal to live the kind of righteous life that those of like mind will think well of us. Do you know the people that I want to think well of me? I want my brothers and sisters in the Lord to think well of me because we're on the road together. And if I act the way I'm supposed to act, 
holy and godly. Maybe those out in the world will see something in us and, and they will see something special about us and want to know why we're that way. And then we can uh, bring those people into the fold. I hope this lesson uh, gave you something to think about for the evening, the uh, desire to be well thought of. Let's end tonight with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this short amount of time that we've had together to uh, worship in your name, to sing praises and to pray and to just get into your word for just a little bit and, and learn something from your word that will carry us on. Maybe we will have these thoughts during the week. Maybe uh, they will be something that, uh, that uh, 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 we can just work on during the week as we think of the desire to be well thought of. Bless us on our Christian walk, dear Heavenly Father, because we know that we have others to walk with us, but we know that you're the one that provides the light. You're the one who lights the way for us. And I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that our walk will be one that you will be satisfied with, that we can uh, achieve our desire to live with you forever. Bless us and be with us, I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. A happy Thanksgiving to all of you. I, I trust that all of you will be safe, uh, that all of you will be sens uh, sensible at this uh, holiday season. And may God bless you all. This may be at home.